Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to part two of the Madman's Jacket Painting Tutorial, me doing the crow. Uh, in this segment, you're going to see <clears throat> uh, the fourth and the fifth layer being put on. You're going to start to see me doing the shadowing effect and the lighting effect, um, doing some detailing work, and then the cleanup and do a little bit of background. And um, the thing is, I decided not to include the lettering because you know that was basically another hour or two worth of of work and you know honestly you know who really wants to watch me do lettering you know as long as you know your measurements and your placements you know you'll be okay and maybe another time I'll do a, a little tutorial on how to do lettering and how to make it clean it up and measure it out and all that but uh, this video is just for the for the the jacket the image alone of the the crow I'll tell you, I didn't realize just how much footage I shot. I mean, it must have been a good three hours worth of content that uh, that I have. So, hopefully, you enjoyed part one. Watching me put down, you know, doing the sketch, placing it, measuring it out, and then putting the layers and all that. So, hopefully, you'll enjoy part two as much as you did part one. Hopefully, more, and uh, that you learned something from it. So, let's get to part two. All right, guys, uh, we're back. And let's go ahead and we're going to mix in a little bit more paint here. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to mix in a little bit of that burnt umber because we're going to start working on shadowing. So that's the cool part is now we're going to start the kind of the, the whole, what do you call it, the uh, shadowing effect and then we'll get into the lighting as well. But right now I want to start mixing in some paint to get some shadow. In certain spots so as you can see I'm just mixing a little paint in here for a contrast on the side because it's not going to require a whole lot it'll go it'll go a long way at least long enough so what I'm gonna do in a minute hold on, what brush do I want to use I'm not gonna use this brush per se right now I'll clean that out and I'll use a thinner brush for this process. So I do want to start getting a little more detailed. So let, oh, let's go ahead and wet this. Dab it off. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of shadow in here. So let's start working the shadow. Mm, that's still pretty light. We'll see here. Yeah, that's, that's looking too light. What I might do is I might throw a little bit of black in there just for shits and giggles. Just for shits and giggles. <clears throat> Darken it up slightly. And when you do this, by the way, guys, when you're mixing, a little bit of black goes a long way on, on paint. A little dab, that's probably even too much, but I'll make it work. Let's go ahead and mix that in. Yeah, see, see how much it really starts to overtake it? And yeah, that might do all right. Let's see. Let's do a test batch here on this side. Yep, that's more what I'm looking for. Yep, that's definitely what I'm looking for. A little darker like that. So we're going to start just kind of laying in our shadow where, where it's going to be. That way we can start getting some definition in this painting. Whoa, getting out of focus here. Come on. There we go. That damn thing. That damn cockamamie thing. There's an old school term for some of you cats that are looking for retro terms. Cockamamie. You don't hear that anymore. I mean, it's kind of goofy, you know, cockamamie. It's a little screwy. Go ahead and get some shadowing in there. This is kind of like also outlining as well. A little bit of outlining. <clears throat> and one of the things that I'm going to do is end up using that, uh, that yellowish white to even go over some of the shadowing area and mix it in so it really starts to blend shadow wise. And you'll you'll see as I go what I'll what I'm 
doing. <clears throat> Sometimes I alter things. I'm known to make changes. So just uh, stick with it. Bear with me. You know, each project is kind of a, a different thing, so. See, what I'm doing right here is I'm already just creating the shadow before I even put the lining in. I'm just going to line it in black down on some of these areas. So I'm just putting the shadow in right now around the, around the eye. And you'll see kind of what what I'll do with that here soon enough. One of the things I like to do is sometimes let the paint run a little dry on the brush and I can create more of a shadowing effect uh, by pulling dry paint or drier paint where it's starting to get thin like this as you can kind of see where it's starting to become a little bit faint. And I'll even do this with the brush to dry it out a little bit. So then I can start well, kind of doing this as well. Again, I want to lighten it up, dry off the brush a little bit. Then you can always go back to the part you just dried off and pull a little bit of more paint off of it. And you can start getting this lighter effect like I'm doing right now. See, now you start getting a little bit more depth in what you're doing. See, lighting and uh, shadows really make things pop. Contrast makes things pop. So try to get as much of that in there as you can. Let's go ahead and pull a line down the center here. Boom. Whoop. Oh that. These don't have to be super perfect because they're shadows. The other lines, however, when I start pulling those will be a lot more precise. And again, that's kind of the cool thing about, uh, about skeletons anyway, is they're not real beautiful because they're, you know, they're uh, just so, sort of messy which I like because you have imperfections in the bones that throw the lighting off or the, the look of it. One of the things, guys, is take your time, flow with it. If something doesn't look right or it ain't working for you, change it. It's a cool thing about paint. You can always cover up. You can always scratch a bit of it off, clean a little bit of it off, whatever, and change it. Hell, that's what I do. When something ain't looking the way I want it to look, I change it. Pull a little bit of definition, shadow-wise, into the shoulders, little ball socket. <clears throat> There we go, we got a little bit of light. Pull a little bit of a dry brush to lighten up the, the shadow effect on the beak. Now, like you said, as I said, you can start to see how it's starting to come into its own. I'm gonna start dry brushing a little bit here as well to kind of lighten that shadow up down around the eye. And let's see, where else do I wanna put some? I'm going to put some, a little, little bit up here, kind of spread it around. And again, I'm probably going to go over this with some more of that yellowish white egg cream type paint. This is just putting a little shadow down. Whatever. <laughs> Give it the bones some imperfection. Because they're not perfect. It's a skull. Let's go ahead and dry brush a little bit in here darken a few spots oh look at that oh it's messy it's sloppy i love it gonna put a happy little tree right in here oh yeah 
we're going to Bob Ross the hell out of this son of a bitch. <laughs> And what I'm going to do, take a, pull a little bit more paint off this, going to go like this, and I'm going to go a little bit and lightly go on the rib bones. The rib bones are connected to the chest bone, chest bones connected to the tail bone, ass bones connected to the dick bone, I don't know. Just having fun at this time, at this point, doesn't really fucking matter. But, uh... Lighten it up, lighten it up. Look at that. There we go. Now we're starting to get some, some depth to this thing. It's starting to pop. It's going to pop. All right. So what I'm going to do is just kind of let this dry up a little bit. It's probably mostly dry anyway. And then I'm going to start into the next phase. All right. All right, guys. We're back. No, that's not what I wanted to do. All right. We're back. And what I'm going to do this time is now I'm going to start working on some of the, the lighter spots. The reason I like to throw down my shadowing and light spots off the bat, <clears throat> let me go ahead and, yeah, this brush will work. The reason I like to throw the light spots and the dark spots down right off the bat without lining, now I've learned this the hard way by doing. I find when I start lining and then I try to do the shadowing, a lot of times I go over my lines, I have to keep going over and over and over and over. So to eliminate a few steps, um, I get real loose and I keep it real loose until I line it and start really pulling the detail in. Like for instance, there's gonna be like black lines in there and uh, most likely I'm gonna outline this whole thing with like white, kind of like a white stripe around it just to kind of give it more of a, a popping effect. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and hit a few spots where I want it to be lighter. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of taking it out of the cap as you can see, because it doesn't really require a whole lot of paint for this part, this portion of it. This is kind of like where the light supposedly hits the uh, the picture. So let's go ahead and kind of get our white spots in there with the paint. And I might even go back over this eventually. And up here, watch this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pull it in up here too a bit. And I might just kind of, well, no, I'm going to pull a little bit of yellow in there. Hold on. Changing up the, the pace a little bit. I'm going to kind of fade that shadow a bit. I don't want it too dark in there. We just pull a little bit of that eggshell cream and start getting it in there. A little bit of that white. Kind of lighten it up slightly. Go ahead and clean the brush off. Now the damn thing needs to refocus. Hmm? Fucking camera, motherfucker. There we go. Fucking stupid camera. Autofocus my fucking ass. Pain in the ass. All right, let's get back to work. I don't get all day to play with this bullshit. Got to get things done. Try to get this video done. Get this damn project done. I don't want to sit here and have technical difficulties. So again, as you can see. Just starting to put in some of that white. Get some of that lighting in there, kind of where I want it. But as you can see, now we've got some light spots on this uh, skeleton as well. At least hopefully you can see we've got some lighter spots. 
starting to bring more of that detail in, which is, you know, pretty much what we want. Let's get a little bit of this right in here to oppose it. And I may again just kind of go over this again later on and figure out what I want to do. Go ahead and clean this uh, brush. And kind of go back to the eggshell stuff because I want to mix a little bit of that in here. There's a few spots I want to touch. Let's go ahead and get a little of that on the brush. Just for blending purposes. It's really all it's for, it's just for some blending. Between the white and the the shadow, the lighting and the shadow here. <clears throat> kind of soften it up a bit. See okay, now we're starting to blend it in. And this will look pretty pretty cool when it's uh, it's all done. Hell, it's probably going to take me some hours to film, <laughs> especially when I get into the nitty-gritty detail work, man. See, now we've got some, some of the softening effect going on in there. Yeah, this is really starting to come out the way I want it to. I'm starting to really see it take shape and I'm liking it. Let the brush a little bit. Let's put a little bit more of that paint. I'm trying to use what's left on that eggshell cream color because I really don't want to have to pour another batch, but if I have to, fuck it, I will. Yeah, I may have to do that. All right, I'm going to let this. Uh, I'm just going to let this sit for a bit, let it uh, dry up for next couple minutes, and then start it on the next round. All right, guys, so while I was away, I went ahead and mixed a little bit more of that, uh, the original color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go over and line some spots and start blending a few spots out. So we can get a nice fading effect of what we're doing here. Uh, let's go ahead and... Pull it in there slightly. I want to start to blur out some of these uh, the shading and the lighting on this because I want to see a little bit more of a, a gradual buildup. Got to sit down. Oh, shit. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. One of the things I wanted to mention is one of the reasons I decided to go with more of a yellowish kind of cream is because this jacket is like a dark brown and I thought it would kind of contrast really nicely by doing that. And so far it's taking shape kind of the way I want it to, so I'm liking it. Definitely liking it. You know, when this thing is done, he's going to love it. I know he's going to be like, damn, dude, I like this. Or one of the things I can do is I can also make like a chipping effect where I can take like a dark brown or some black and start chipping and make it look kind of rough and ragged. I kind of like doing that too, especially for a skeleton. I dig that for a skeleton. Just take it a little bit at a time on the brush, just enough to spread. And I'm trying to spread it liberally because I want it to be light. Because I definitely do want to lighten up some of those, uh, those spots. Especially like right in here. I'm trying to build like a bit of a gradient effect. So it's not so pronounced. I have a feeling I'm going to end up putting way more work into this damn thing than I thought I was going to do, you know? That happens sometimes. I kind of get going and it's like, alright, let's see what I can do. And the thing is, I haven't painted in a while either. It's, 
It's been a while, that's for sure. I haven't really been doing much painting lately. It's all been digital work. So it's kind of nice just to kind of throw, throw myself right back into the loop and get a little painting in. See how I'm being a lot more precise where I want my stuff to be? Because now we're starting to get more into the detail work in uh, lightening up some of these different spots. Getting that blend, the proper blend I'm looking for. So definitely starting to take my time a little bit more in this part of it. One of the things I may do is I may go back in with some more shadowing and do some light shadowing again. We'll see. But like I told you guys, this is a process. Don't rush it. However many layers it takes, it just takes. You know what I mean? Don't, don't sell it short. Actually sit down, take a look at it, take a break sometimes, step back, look at it, and see what else you think it needs. And coming from an artistic standpoint, I just kind of like look at things and, you know, form and shadowing and the contrast of things. And I start trying to make decisions of, eh, I think it needs a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that or, you know, whatever. Again, I'm not classically trained, guys. I just was a kid who loved drawing and did it for a long time. And to me, there's a difference between passion and school. I'd rather just work at my craft and learn as I go. Make mistakes, make mistakes. It's the only way. That's one of the best ways to learn, guys. All right, what I'm going to do is dry this off, rinse it out, dry it off. And I'm going to start lightly pulling some more shading. It's kind of like this teetering effect, bouncing back and forth. This is one of the techniques that I do to get things to start looking the way I want them to look. So I'm now starting to get a lot more precise. And I may be wasting my time doing this, honestly, because a lot of these lines are going to be blacked anyway. So I may be kind of just wasting my time, but it just feels right at the moment. I'm going to go up here, put a little bit more of this darker shading up here. Since we kind of have that gradient effect building, I'm going to make this top part a little bit darker. And I think I'm going to leave it with this right now and kind of let this dry. And then I'm going to start putting in some black lines. So stay tuned for that. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start putting a little bit of black lining in there. I'm going to use this brush. It's a step down from the other brush I was using. I'm going to go ahead and wet it. Kind of just dry it off a little bit and uh, shake this up. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull the cap off so I don't have to really squirt any paint in the, uh, the palette tray. I'm just going to work out of the cap. And I do this quite often. I actually work a lot of times out of the cap. Get a little bit of paint on there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start going around the I sock it there. Pull these lines where I want them. And I'm not making this line look real neat. I'm making this kind of cracked looking because this is a distressed skeleton. I mean, there's going to be cracks in it.
And this is a very tedious process. It does take time. <laughs> So you notice I'm really taking my time and I'm not rushing this part. Now I may end up lining a couple more times. We'll see, depending on what else I decide to do. But this is where you start cleaning things up. Another thing I want to also mention is make sure you take time to breathe. Don't try to hold your breath too much. I do that sometimes. But try to into the nose, out through the mouth, and just let it flow. And I just had this really wild idea of doing this. Mad Ben, what are you doing? Getting creative. That's what I'm doing. Creating a bit of a chipped up looking effect, really distressed. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit more lining and then I'll hit the next part. While I was taking a break, I had an idea. I'm gonna take this fanning brush, as you can see here. It's an older brush, it's kind of destroyed. Um, and I'm just going to kind of pull some lines off this thing because I just want to. You know, I've been looking at this thing. I'm like, yeah, it's just too bare. It's not exactly where I want it to be. I mean, yeah, this looks nice, but I'm going to be doing some outlining and I want to add a little something to it and give it a little extra flair. So we'll see how this does. I don't recommend using an older brush that has been kind of destroyed um, to do this kind of stuff, but I can make it work. Kind of just do some rays off of it. Everything comes together in due time. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that sit and I'll show you what's next. I'm going to go ahead and take a bit of this black here. Just pour a little bit of that. What I'm kind of doing is just drying the brush like this on my hand. I know this is a little bit out of order. It's kind of how I work, guys. Okay. Kind of dip it in the black here. And I'm just going to dry it off a little bit. And then I'm just going to kind of start pulling. See, and I'm leaving the paint a little bit wet to kind of get this, this glowing effect that I'm looking for. I want more of kind of like this ray effect. And that's the cool thing about it is it doesn't need to be real clean. It doesn't need to be perfect. You know, that's, I'm kind of going for that imperfect type thing just to kind of pull some lines in there. 
So I'm leaving it a bit wet. Now I didn't tell them about doing any of this. <clears throat> but looking at it, it was just kind of looking a bit flat to me. And I just wanted to do something with it to kind of change it up slightly. I want to give it this kind of a glowing effect. But he don't know that I'm doing this. I actually want to make him something really nice that he can go, hey, you know, that's that's insane. That's that pops. And I'll add more detail to it as I go. But for now, I'm going to leave that. Dry this, clean and dry this brush out. And what I'm also going to do is maybe add some white in here. Because again, I'm going to be outlining a lot of this here all in white. So I'm going to do a nice tight line around here of white and then kind of fan it out as I go. Even though I don't intend maybe to do something, my artistic nature takes over and I just, I have to try stuff. I have to go, oh, hey, let me put this in here. Let me try that, you know? That's kind of my artistic process at work. I just have to try things and I have to do it, even though I didn't say anything about making it pop like this. I told him I was going to just kind of do a real basic colored in type thing lining colors a little bit of coloring but here I am making this like going for a masterpiece <laughs> it seems dumb but you know again this is this is how I roll cleaning this up See, as you can see, now it's starting to get a little bit more crystal clear. It's really starting to clean up a lot. This is that process I was telling you about. You just kind of start going over. Start cleaning it up. Art is not, I mean, art can be logical to a, a standpoint. See, because like most of my day-to-day my -day life, guys, you know, I'm pretty logical. It's always about what's going to make sense, what the right, you know, making the right moves at the right time. But art, man, it's it's a little different. Art is not something you can really break down into logic. I mean, you can to a certain point, I guess. But ultimately, you got to go by your gut. You got to go by feel. You got to really look at something and go, "Okay, what feels right here?" What do I want to do next? How do I want this to go? You know, for me, a lot of this stuff really is just about feel and uh, all that kind of stuff. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and then pick it up from here. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to kind of go back and start messing with this. I'm going to take some of that black. Kind of wipe it, pull, wipe a little bit, pull, take a little bit more, pull. What I'm doing is I'm trying to create a little bit of depth with lining, pull, pull. I'm going to go back to my fan brush, and I'm going to be jumping around a lot here. Because that's just kind of the mood I'm in, guys. I'm ready to jump around some more. I 
I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to do some other things. I'm going to start kind of working on that outlining a little bit. Because I want to see how that's going to play into these brush strokes I've done. One of the things to make note of with acrylic paint, it dries quickly, so work. You got to work with it. And this lining is probably going to take a while. So I'm not going to show all of the lining. I'm just going to show little bits of it. But you guys kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. All right, guys. So now what we're up to is we're playing around with the Sharpie white paint marker. I dig this marker because I can spread a lot of white paint. And it gives me quite a bit of control, actually. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. We're going to do a little bit more outlining to kind of uh, thicken up that layer on the white lines. So, for instance, we're going to pull it here. Really try to thicken it up a little bit around some of the spots that didn't get as thick as I liked with the paint and brush. All right, we're back. I go I went ahead and I got uh, little bone parts done in between the actual picture and the, the white outline. And what I'm going to do next is I got this sponge brush right here. I'm going to go ahead and just mess with it a little bit. Like so. I want to give this a little more depth. I'm still not quite happy with it. So we're going to go ahead and play with it a little bit. I've used sponge brushes before. They work pretty good. You can, act you can actually get some really cool stuff out of them <clears throat> if you use them right. That'll work for now. Now, while old Man Man was hitting a piss break, I had this idea to add a little bit of red. Ooh. Here we go. Bad Man's going to just take it somewhere else. Because, hell, why just do things the way I intended to do them from the beginning? Let's go ahead and add a little bit of that burnt umber in there. Let's put that there for a second. Forgot I'm running out of burr tumber, so I'm going to have to take some from here. Let's see, what kind of brush do I want to use? Ooh, let's go ahead and use this one. Let's dry that out. And just throw a little bit of that in there. Oh, shit. Changing up the dynamics a little bit. See, when I when the sun hits this, I kind of want it to have like a little bit of a reddish kind of effect to it. It's not so easily seen here, but this is one of those underlying effects that I kind of want this to have. Probably can't see it. Eh? Hell, I don't, can't really see it. Let's go ahead and hit a few spots on the, the old bird here. So as you can see so far, we've got 
We have the lighting, some shadow. We've got a few different colors in here. And this is a funny thing. I said I wasn't going to put many colors in here, but here I am doing the damn thing. We've got the outlining done. We've got a few streaks and rays coming off of it. And in the sun, some of this red is going to catch, which is kind of the effect I'm going for to kind of give it mm, a little bit different of a, a feel. And then right under here is where the block letters are going to go. His last name is going to go right in here, block letters. And uh, I'm actually rethinking it. I may film it. I may not. I don't know. But for now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of take a break from it from now tonight. So this is the basic thing. I may improve on it. Maybe I won't. We'll see. But uh, I feel like it's a good time to take a break and kind of start doing some other stuff. And I'm just going to leave this picture as is. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like it, subscribe, share, favorite, the whole damn thing. This is kind of what I got. Um, I will be posting the final finished product on my uh, Instagram and my Facebook fan page. Uh, the links are in the description below, so go follow. You won't be disappointed. I'm always posting stuff here and there, uh, especially when I'm not on you know, YouTube doing the channel stuff. I'm always posting something and updates and yada, yada, yada. So if you don't know, get a clue, get a brew, get a rock and roll tattoo. Hang loose and be safe. I'll catch you on the flip side. Madman out.